So I just wanted to share with you some of these word problems that I created for one of my students that I tutor. I thought it would be beneficial to show everyone how some of the algebra that you're learning can be applied to word problems or real world scenarios. Sometimes you'll even see them on your um, college placement tests or whatever tests you're taking or even just in your everyday algebra classes. And these questions, I have seen examples of these appear on all the things that I just listed above. So. If you're interested in seeing how some word, word problems are solved, then stick with the video. So it says, a wrench is dropped from the top of a 256 foot tower. The height in feet after T seconds is given by the equation. I'm just gonna write that H is equal to negative 16 T squared plus 256. When will the wrench hit the ground? And of course my battery is about to die. <laughs> Anyways. Let's just go ahead and get through this the best that we can. Sorry, I'm a little bit tired today. But anyways, so when you look at this type of problem, I just wanna show you what type of graph it would form and it may help you just to understand the full picture. This is going to create an upside down parabola. The way that I like to remember this is that if it's a negative number in the beginning, then it's upside down and it looks like it's a sad face. If it was a positive number, then it looks like it's a happy face and it would be a happy parabola. So because it's a negative number, it's a negative parabola. And the way that I knew that it was this shape of a parabola was because of the squared that was in the equation. So now let's go ahead and let's just draw an x, y, just to see what it would look like um, on graphed. But then also, um, let's just talk about the actual problem. It says that a wrench is dropped from the top of a tower. So let's pretend like the tower is right in the middle and the wrench is dropped from the very top or the peak of the parabola. That's where the wrench is being dropped. And then it's being dropped to the ground. So it's gonna end up being on this level ground here where the wrench is going to end up. So the height here is 256, but the, the height when it falls to the ground is actually zero feet. And that's important because we're gonna have to plug in some information for the height. So again, let's go ahead and look at the equation. H is equal to negative 16 T squared plus 256. H is going to be zero because on the ground, it's zero feet. And then we're gonna solve for T or the time that it takes for it to hit the ground. So now we're just gonna go ahead and see if we can solve for T. So I'm gonna add 16 T squared to both sides. And I'm gonna be left with 16 T squared is equal to 256. I'm gonna divide both sides by 16. And I'm gonna be left with T squared is equal to, I don't have my calculator, so I'm just checking what my notes were, 16. And then the opposite of square is square root. So I'm gonna square root both sides. The T's are gonna be by itself. And the answer is gonna be plus or minus four. It's important for you to get used to seeing answers like this, plus or minus four, when you're talking about square root, but specifically when you're talking about these types of problems, because they're always going to say that there's two answers potentially, because positive four times positive four is going to equal 16, but negative four times negative four is also equal to positive 16. So there are two answers to choose from. But the only thing that we need to remember is that we're talking about time or seconds. So you have to ask yourself, which one of these answers actually could be an answer for this problem? And the answer would have to be positive four because there's no such thing as it taking negative four seconds to do something. So the answer would be T is equal to four or it would take four seconds for that wrench from, to fall from the top of the building down to the ground. Okay, that was a lot of information, but I just wanted to share that with you. But let's go ahead and do it again. This time, we're going to do it a little bit quicker. That way, you can really see if you're actually learning and if you remember the steps. So a paint can falls from an, a 140 foot, 144 foot scaffold. Its height h after t seconds is h is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 144. What is... The, when will it hit the ground or how long will it take to hit the ground? Again, because this is a negative number, we're gonna think about it being a negative parabola where the top point is going to be the top of the scaffolding, which is 144 feet in the sky or in the air. 
and it falling down to the ground would be at zero feet. And that's what we want to figure out. If we plug in zero feet into the equation, what are we going to get for the time or how long is that going to take us? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add 16 T squared to both sides. And we're going to getting 16 T squared is equal to 144. Divide both sides by 16. T squared is equal to nine. Find the square root of both sides. So T is equal to positive or negative three. But again, we're gonna look at those two answer choices and we're gonna pick positive three. The reason we're gonna pick positive three is because um, seconds have to be positive. You can't have an answer that's negative seconds. All right, so we did a couple of those. I'm not gonna make it exhausting for you, but now let's go ahead and switch to a different type of problem. And this problem I've seen like everywhere, so it's good for us to review it. So it, we're gonna look at number four actually. The width of a rectangle is four kilometers less than twice its length. If the area of the rectangle is 48 square kilometers, find the dimensions of the rectangle. All right, so I like to buy myself some time just by drawing a rectangle because sometimes the problem is so overwhelming that you're just like, let me just draw a picture before I gotta deal with these numbers. So sometimes I like to draw a picture first. Then I think of, we're talking about area. What do I know about area? Area is equal to length times the width, okay? So now let's talk about what information we know. We have to figure out what the length is going to be. We need to figure out what the width is going to be. And we also know what the area is equal to and the area is equal to 48. Okay, so the first thing I would recommend is read the problem. When you read the problem, one or the other is going to be X. Either the length is gonna be X or the width is gonna be X. How do you determine which one to label as X? Well. The one that they don't mention much about, that is the X. X is the forgotten or the not talked about sibling in the family. <laughs> like X is the, the one that's always overlooked. You forget about them. They're important, but you just, <laughs> they're just not much is mentioned about them. Mom is going on and on and on about the other one. So let's go ahead and take that and see if it applies. We all, we love our moms. We're just kidding. Anyway. So the width of a rectangle is four kilometers less than twice its length. So it says all this information about the width, but it says nothing about the length. So the length is going to be that labeled X, okay? And now we're gonna try to figure out in relation to the length, what is the width? So it says the width is four kilometers less than twice the length. Four kilometers less than twice the length. And now this is where math language comes in. We have to figure out what is it telling us to do? Is it telling us to add, subtract, multiply, divide? Well, four kilometers less means minus four. You're subtracting. Twice means times two. So two times something. And we've already labeled the length as X. So twice the length is two times X, or that's just the same as saying two X. So we have two X and we have minus four. We're gonna put those together, two X minus four. That is how we're gonna label the width, two X minus four. And if you have a question about that, just always put um, the variable first and then the number that's by itself or put the multiplication first and then the adding or subtracting second. However, that makes sense to you. Okay, now that we have these details, we can go ahead and figure out if we can solve for X. So let's go ahead and write it in the equation. Area is equal to length times width. The area is 48, the length is x, the width is 2x minus 4. Let's go ahead and distribute the x. That means we're multiplying it out. x times 2x is 2x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Now we're going to go ahead and try to put everything to one side and see if we can factor it out so that we can figure out what the x is equal to. So we're going to subtract 48 from both sides. We're gonna subtract 48 from both sides and we're left with two X squared minus four X minus 48. Then we're gonna go ahead and factor it, meaning we're gonna to try to take out a number from each one of these because we can. And that's just gonna make our job simpler when we have to factor. So we're gonna divide each one of them by two. So that's left with X squared minus two X minus 24. And we took out the two, so we're gonna put it outside. And now we're gonna go ahead and break these into two binomials. 
by putting x and x. Then we have to find two numbers that multiply to equal negative 24, but they add to equal negative 2. So two numbers that multiply to equal negative 24, but add to negative 2, would be negative 6 and positive 4. Negative 6 times 4 is negative 24. Negative 6 plus 4 is equal to negative 2. Okay, and now we're just going to set everything equal to 0. That's not true, so we're just going to forget about that. Then we're going to set this equal to 0 and solve. So x is equal to 6, or we're going to set this equal to 0, x is equal to negative 4. Now again, we have to ask ourselves, even though we've gotten two answers, x is either 6 or negative 4, you have to ask yourself, when we're talking about length, width, measurements, do you ever get a negative measurement if you're going on to eBay or Etsy or whatever it is, you're ordering a rug or a picture frame, do you ever say that the rug is going to be negative four feet? No, it's always a positive number. So that must mean the positive number or the answer to x would be six. What does that mean? Well, because the length is x, that means the length is six feet or kilometers. I'm just making up measurements, but you get the point. So then if the length is six, then we can also enter in for the width. So two x minus four, we're just gonna put it six in there and solve. 12 minus four is eight. So that means the width is eight kilometers. The length is six kilometers. So if the width is eight kilometers and the length is six kilometers, does that equal 48 for an area? Yes, because eight times six is 48. So we were able to find all the dimensions of the rectangle. If you're still with me, that means you really want to be able to solve these types of problems. So I'll just do a little bit of a recap and then we'll be finished. When we were looking at this problem, what do we do? We I identified the equation for area. Then we were able to write down the details that we were given. We were able to figure out what, what to label as x. And then we were able to look at the information for the width and write it as an expression. After that, we multiplied everything out. We factored it a little bit, we factored it some more, we were set, able to set everything equal to zero and we were able to figure out what X is equal to. And then once we figured out what X is equal to, we were able to go back to the top and enter that information into the expressions for length and for width. And we were able to see that the answers that we were able to get actually make sense. And that's a huge part of solving word problems is making sure that the answer that you get actually applies to the real world, which in this case it does. 8 times 6 is 48. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little study session. I apologize that my iPad is about to die, which is classic Miss Amber, and then also that I'm a little bit sleepy, and I dragged on a tiny bit. But you guys saw overall gist, and I hope this helps you guys in your studying for your Accuplacer or studying for your college placement, your exams, your algebra, or, hey, say you just like math and you just like tuning in. Um, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and as always, happy studying.